Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Um, so today there was a, uh, not today, but last time I did a video, there was a massive, massive quality issue um, with, as far as the video goes, with my previous video, which was the AOE video. And speaking of AOE, I always, so you always forget to mention something. Um, as regards to AOE video, on a quick side note, um, I forgot to mention that the butterfly is um, shown in, as everyone knows, in at the end of Rumbling, the Sim song, the, the, the opening for season four, part two. The, the butterfly is shown, and the butterfly um, was shown in season one with Mikasa, uh, with the, not Mikasa, with the praying mantis eating the butterfly. So the praying mantis is Mikasa, the butterfly is Aaron, Aaron's gonna die, it's in the opening, so. That's another reason why AOE is not happening. Anyway, but, uh, so today I'm gonna, I try to fix the quality. So hopefully this video will be much, much better. But anyway, today we're going to be talking about, also I apologize for my collar. I lost my collar today so I, you know, it is what it is. Anyway, so, um, today we're gonna be talking about Historia. Now, of course, I've done a bunch of videos about, you know, I've done, I done, I done a bunch of videos, and some of those talk about Historia, some of those don't talk about Historia, but today I want to have a dedicated video to Historia, okay? So, I'm gonna, what we're going to be talking about today is who Historia is, what she means to the story, how she changes the story, and what you're supposed to, um, what's the messaging from her, what are you supposed to learn from her, because remember, when your when your when your teacher assigns you to read something, or maybe if you endeavor to read something by yourself, you're reading it to gain a deeper perspective of the world. Okay, that's what you're doing when you read nonfiction. Okay, when you read, uh, I mean not, not nonfiction, when you're reading fiction. When you're reading nonfiction, you're learning technical stuff, right? If you learn how an airplane works, you're learning how mathematics works. If you're reading nonfiction, you're learning about human nature via a wiser, more intelligent, or uh, a person with different experiences. So, that's why you people read Lord of the Flies. That's why people read 1984, to gain a deeper perspective of human nature. Those are all considered classic literature. And as I said before, Attack on Titan transcends its medium, and it is 100% classic literature. So, when you're reading this, Imagine your teacher assigned it to you, okay? So what are you supposed to learn from Historia in an educational um, setting? Now, that's, that's what we're going to be talking about. Now, who is Historia Rez or Rice? I actually never heard anyone say Rice. I always say Rez, but I guess it's Rice. All right, who is Historia Rez? Well, she was a girl who grew up um, with nobody in her life. Um, she would see Frida, but her father would continually erase her memories of Frida. She, her dad didn't love her. Her mom didn't love her. She never saw her dad until her mom, until the walls came down and then she got killed. Her mom got killed. And, um, you know, her last words or if only had the strength to kill you, right? So she says, the first time that she hugs her, she says hurtful words to her. She says something along the effects of, uh, I believe it was, um, like, get away from someone like that. Maybe she didn't even talk to her. Maybe she, maybe she just took her up and threw her. But um, her mother never talked to her. She, she, was, she gave her a bloody nose. That's the only thing that she did with her. And then she died. She said, if only I had the strength to kill you. Those were her last words. And then she was going to be killed herself because she was a stain on the royal family. Because she was the um, bat, I, guys. I'm sorry. I keep freaking turn my phone off when I do these videos. Uh, okay. So um, that was actually my Reddit. Actually, this is actually a good plug. That was actually uh, a Reddit notification. If you want to follow me on Reddit, uh, go to r slash blue the It's going to be the same profile, it's the same picture. And if you want to, you know, follow me there, if you want to, like, maybe, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll start doing polls. If, you, if some of you guys start subscribing, I'll start doing polls and, you know, community engagement and stuff. But for now, I just post my videos. And if you guys want something, I'll, I'll put it in there. And I also will make these disclaimer videos like, hey, I forgot to put this in there. I forgot to put this in there. Uh, so, yeah. If you want to go follow that, it's r slash Beluga the Yeagers. Anyway, so, 
Historia, um, and then she was gonna get she was a, she was a bastard of the illegitimate son of the <laughs> she was a bastard of the king king uh rice, and so she was gonna get killed along with her mother, but her father made a deal with Kenny, and her job was to take on a role of a cadet. She was gonna change her name. And she was going to go into the cadet corps and not say anything. And she was going to be able to keep her alive. That was a deal. So, she went to the cadet corps. Playing the role of what it means to be a lady. What uh, she, she was subconsciously taught by Frida. Which is, you know, to be nice to everyone and all this other stuff. You know, and just let yourself get run over. Let yourself be a lawn mat. Uh, doormat, I mean. And just be nice to everyone. And so, um, we first see, one of the first things we see of her in the train arc is we see her give, I think, bread and water to Sasha. All right, she gives bread and water to Sasha, so it's showing that she is a um, nice person. Now, one of the things that makes this story a really, really good character, especially as a female character, is that Isiyama, um, intentionally, not pretty sure it's intentional, but intentionally or not, sets her up to be... The typical, you know, uh, uh, you know, just wait, wait, kawi is that the word? Kawi, you know, just cute girl who's just there um, to be cute. And on a another, while we're on talking about Historia being cute, um, one I actually watched. Uh, I think his name is Reduk Reduk's video on um, Reiner, and he made a very very good observation that was really really nice to me, and that was. Um, that Historia, that Ryan had a crush, or likes Historia, because Historia represents what he can't be. Historia took off her mask and lived how she actually was. Ryan is still wearing his mask of the, of the soldier, of the warrior, and of the soldier. I mean, of the, of the soldier and of the warrior. He's still wearing that mask. He's still having this fake persona. But Historia is able to shed her mask and live her true self. So that's why, um... Reiner likes her, right? So, and that also explains why you know some people are whining about the, the them smelling him smelling the the uh, the note. I mean, do what you will with that. Um, but you know his, his his crush on her the entire time has deeper meaning. This is only something Isayama will provide you with. Again, seemingly innocuous details like. Uh, a, a, I mean, come on, it's a crushing anime. I mean, come on, she rips her skirt and he likes her. I mean, come on, that's simple, simple anime stuff. But not only is it not sexual in any way, because she rips, she has a, you know, a full-length skirt and then she just rips like a little bit. It's not sexual. I mean, it has sexual implications, but I'm saying it's not overly sexual. There's no, you know, anything there. It's just, you know, psychology and we're just looking at the plot there's no extra stuff there's no extra dialogue there's no extra comments no extra anything it's just straight to the story so um that being said again that we're gonna talk we're gonna talk about that later but just just right now that is also what she means to the story she's she's about shedding your mask and that's why Ryan likes him that's how Isayama perfectly harmonizes it with her again he takes a trope and he turns it on its head now let's continue to talk about Astoria. So she, um, again, she's set up as this, you know, the cute girl who's just there, you know, so she gets to look cute and be cute. And Isayama purposely does, purposely does this, just like he did with Mikasa. Mikasa's like, oh, the protagonist's love interest. He does nothing all day until the very last chapter. And he's like, oh, oh, sorry. You know, first card. He's actually not that, per that, that person. But we're talking about Astoria right now. Mikasa video will come later. So, um... Historia is um has character development that takes place over three seasons. And I, I don't know how much how long that is in the um, manga, but I know in the anime you have to wait a pretty much a full let's see 2018. So you have to wait a full five years for character development. Her character development is not rushed at all. See, everyone in America is, is, is concerned with a strong, independent female. So, they wouldn't dare have such a gamble where they would have um, Historia. Um, it's, it's pretty much deserves from game in America. Either the girl's just there to look cute, or she's a strong and independent female. And she's really not. But, um, so, to have... This character, 
just be this girl who, again, it just is there to look cute, but it's there to look cute on design. She wants to be there to look cute. She wants to be good at everybody. I mean, yeah, she wants to because that's probably was the role she was playing. Then she ran to, again, one of the most consequential characters in the show. I, I, I'd say as far as effect on other characters, Ymir is the most consequential character in the entire series. And I'm not joking. Okay. Literally. And again, when I say I'm not like these white girls out here, I'm, I'm telling you, when I say literally, I mean literally. She's literally the most consequential character as it relates to characters affecting other characters. But we'll we might talk about her later, we might not. But Ymir runs into her. And of course, see <laughs> the phantoms obsessed with shipping and oh look, it's a, it's it's a, they're, they're a couple. Yeah, it's the Yama could care less. You could, you could, you could care less about your about your about your uh your couples. You know, uh, I also watched the uh the, the fan dub of, of I think his name is Redirk. Redirk. He's like, I've taken, you know, that's too well over this channel, but he says, hey, I, I've taken your uh, ships and your deranged fan art, and I've, I mean, you can fill in the blank, but maybe you can't, but it's like I could give less of an F about your little ships, but he cares about the actual substance, you see, he cares about actual substance, so um, this relationship is because Ymir sees herself in Krista, okay? Krista was like her. She felt like she needed to be somebody else. Okay? She felt like she needed to play a role to appease other people. Ymir did feel like that decades ago, but then she learned her lesson. And um, she thus changed her mind. After having a second chance at life, she then changed her mind and decided that she would only live for herself and be unabashedly herself and not pretend to be anything that she wasn't, vices and all. Okay, now I would consider Ymir a um, bad person, but just saying, you know, bad person in, in, in regards to Attack Titan is is hilarious it's it's laughable everyone there is the evil person i mean yeah, everyone there is worse than anyone you know i don't care who you know okay everyone in that show is worse than someone you know right again as i said before they're just they're just people just sinners trying to do the right thing that's all they're there for aaron is which is why he says it twice he says this twice he says this at the end of child of evil and he says this in the rumbling he just says i just want to do the right thing that's all i want to do all I want to do is save Mikasa and his friends. Connie, that's all I want to do. Just do the right thing, right? Armin, same thing. Hanji, same thing, right? Uh, Erwin, and it's a little bit more complicated. But they're just trying to do the right thing. And um, but I would say that in in this world, she is a bad person. She is selfish. She only cares about herself, and she will do anything to take care of herself. She knows that taking a story outside of the walls wouldn't help her, and but she gets this sort of gratification from knowing how bad, how, 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 how much Historia knows how bad she is. And she still loves her. And she, well, not maybe not loves her, but she still smiles at her. She still shows her compassion. Okay. And again, this is, again, this is, this is great, real world pickable stuff because that is exactly how God is with all of us. He knows more than you do how bad and how disgusting we all are but he still shows us incredible mercy and grace every single day and that's why i love attack on titan so much because it correlates so beautifully with the real world and again humans um i wouldn't say need that but humans desire that humans want that that's how humans are made that's how they're made i mean think about this god created humans to relate to him in that very way Okay, I'm not going to go too much on a theological tangent, but I'm just saying. Obviously, he created us to relate to him in that way, and he, and he, and he wants us to relate to him in that way. All right? And again, I also brought my Amir Vido children, right? There's a certain um, beauty to a parent and child relationship because you know how um, awful your kid is, especially when he's young, but you still love him anyway. You still look at him and you still smile at him. You still do the best of him. 
what I'm trying to say well that is that humans desire that. And that's what Isayama shows. And, it's, and Isayama has Ymir be this selfish person. Of course, she gets she, she gets uh, a last, you know, character development at the end. But she shows her to be the selfish person who uses Ymir, Ymir uh, Historia for her own selfish purposes. But at the end of the day, she lets it go. Right? So. Ymir comes along and then she changes herself. She's like, hmm. Maybe I should try this whole living for myself thing out. I mean... It looks like it's working well, pretty well for her. And, and, and then she tries to spew this this stuff about dying in battle and all this other stuff. Which I, when I was watching, I was like, this is ridiculous. You're just trying to assuage her guilt. Um, and his, uh, Ymir, I mean, she just, you know, that's what Ymir's there for. She just called her, she called her right out on that crap. I was like, yeah, exactly. It's Isayama, get it. See, Isayama understands his characters more than most authors do. Um, and again, once is a once once is a great example of this, of how characters are just the author clearly has no idea what the hell he is doing with any of his characters, and well, they they are characters because there's two of them, but you know uh, he has no idea what he's doing with his characters, and he just you know does whatever the hell he wants to do with them, and just, you know, there's nothing he can do about it. Um, and again, that's just, that's just one example. You know, most shows, most mo- not le- much less movies because they have less time to their, their margin of error is their time their, their time frame to f up is smaller. But shows do this because they have to go on for on and on and on and on. And along the show, gets the more time you have to f up. And it, most shows do that. Isayama does not. He knows his characters. He knows who they are. And so. Even something glorious like dying in battle, something that seems a true sacrifice, is actually incredibly selfish of Storia. But that shows how selfish she actually is. Now let's pause for a second. This correlates to the real world. How people do a lot of things that seem to, including yourself. Again, this is this is why we have books like this. We have a fiction for you to look at yourself. You have people and yourself, maybe. I either have the inclination or do do things that are that appear to be good but are actually selfish and this is why you get called on it better he's basically saying better to uh express your actual true selfish intention to go along with it and hey if you do do that not only is it good to do because it's true and, and it's right but not only if you do that you'll end up you'll end up being a better person anyways that worst girl in the world, she was the worst girl in the world from the start. She was. And it got exposed on the mountain. So then, you know, she's like, okay, I'm going to live for myself now. And that's when she starts doing it. And then, then she goes and she uh, pens up the courage to kill her father. But but we're getting ahead of ourselves. Um, when she became the worst girl in the world and she saved Aaron. Uh, from the thing. She just wanted to say Aaron. It was purely driven by selfishness and um, uh, friendship. I, I don't think there's a romantic thing going on there, but she uh, had a fit in for Aaron. She didn't want Aaron to die, and so she um, went and had and saved him. And she knew, knowing that it was the worst, that it was the bad thing to do for humanity's sake, but she did it anyway. Because she was going to live for herself and then she went and she killed her, her father which again people keep saying how Attack on Titan is like bad for a woman and how it's you know showing you know chauvinistic themes and stuff like that I, I, I don't I, 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 I don't get it I don't understand why they say that but uh, yeah she works with the courage to kill her father and the uh, you know the, the cliche strong independent female but done properly uh, so she kills her father, and she becomes a queen. And the coup ends. But, but, this is very, very, very important to note. And I actually posted this on my Reddit, one, one of my Reddit uh, posts. Oh, I forgot to mention this. But, she did not want to be a queen. She didn't. What she wanted to do was take care of people because, funny enough, this was called a this was called a layered character. I know I know a lot of you have a hard time understanding nuance and layers until so you you just you just you just um, bleep post about uh, the ending. Um, but she's a layered character because here's the thing: 
that goodness was still inside of her. She still genuinely wanted to help people. But this is why Isayama says to just be unabashedly yourself. You see how this works? Because she had did want to help people, but she's also putting on a mask and she's also being selfish at the same time sometimes. But then she went past it, understood who she was, communicated to herself and to others who she was, and then she ended up doing good things anyway. You see how that works? That and that's how it's gonna work in real life. So again, now we're talking about real world personal applications to your life. Your life. Yes. John and John and Lewiston, Maine. Yes, you. Now. Now. So we move forward. So she wants to be a, the queen. And she don't want to be the queen. Sorry, she don't want to be the queen. She wants to help people. She wants to go help orphanages and, and people who are uh, downtrodden and, and whatnot. But she needs to. For one last time, she needs, she needs to play another role. And her role, her next role, will be queen. And we'll discuss it after I re-switch the light. Remember, we're, we're in the laundry room now, guys. So I have to fix the light. We'll be back. This is not a live stream, so they could just... Okay, so... Her next role is to be queen. Right, a role that she does not want to take. Again, I just want to go off on a tangent here for a little bit. People are complaining that Historia did not have a big enough role in the ending. But what I would like to remind you is that she did not want to be queen in the first place. She did not want that. And she also did not want to have blood on her hands or benefit from blood spilt. So her being married to the guy who's embroiled in an international conflict and actively participating in this bloody international conflict that mostly kills innocent people would be against her character. This is why I say when authors don't understand their characters, you would have traded out cheap drama and romance for her actual true character. Her true character, as set forth from the beginning, would not agree or not want to go. We know she wouldn't agree because she said it, but would not want to go along with any of that. She wanted to be married, she wouldn't want to be involved. She preferred to be on the sidelines, and she got to help her friends in a massive, massive way. And she was integral to Aaron's plan succeeding. So she did play a role. Because again, without Historia, Aaron's plan wouldn't have succeeded. They would have been sunk as traitors. And again, I am, you know my channel, I'm blue with the Jaegers. I mean, I I sort of agree they're, yeah, they're traitors, but I mean, they're Aaron's friends, and I get where they're coming from. But uh, the Jaegers would have not been so kind, and they would have uh, killed them, especially the uh, Merlean warriors, uh, Annie, Peak, Falcon, and Gabby, and Reiner. They would have killed them. <laughs> so uh, Historia plays a massive part in this. Now, so, she doesn't want to be queen, but, but, but Levi uh, physically, <laughs> physically forces her to become a queen. And she becomes a queen, and she restores peace to the island. And, you know, then she's chilling, and she's actually doing what she wants to do. She's still tracked with, with queen, old, queen old duties, or uh, duties related to her being the queen. She's still doing this, but... She's also um, taking care of people. She's running orphanages. I think she had a pretty good welfare system when I read in uh, the end of Flying 17. She's a pretty good welfare system. And she's helping a lot of people. And she even got Levi on board. Right? You guys remember this because he was in the underground and they were trying to fix the underground. Um, but she's still being the queen. And she still doesn't fulfill her actual... You know, Her character arc hasn't been fulfilled. And I talked about this in my other video. It's actually my most popular video. But um, she still... Um, wants a family. And then this farmer boy comes along. Now, I'm going to explain to you one of the biggest, biggest, biggest reasons why Historia did not marry Aaron and why we've been so dumb. Actually, there's a Mika to make more sense. But one of the reasons why it's dumb related to Historia is because 
and only been dead either at that moment or after a year. Okay, either that or either that year or the next year. I mean, either that day or week or the next or the uh, within the year, he would have been dead. That is not a complete family. Okay. And again, I, I agree this, this, this need help ex, uh, execution-wise. But if you really think about it, as I said before, the baby is the first baby in 2,000 years that does not need to get sacrificed for royal blood, and they can all grow up happy together without worrying about the family line and passing on Titans. That's the first time in 2,000 years. First time in 2,000 years that the royal family can stay together and be a family. That's why the baby's emphasized. And my, one of the reasons why, in my opinion. Now, um... Uh, the farmer boy gets to be the father and the husband for the entire time. Aaron does not. He's going to die after a year, or he's going to die, um, or he's going to die that week because Mikas is going to kill him. Or, 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 let's say somehow he manages to ex- somehow he manages to not be killed by Mikas uh, and to and to evade the curse of Ymir. If somehow all that happens, she still would be married to a person who has people say people say billions because they they don't know their history, but uh, who has hundreds of millions, maybe a billion, people innocent people's blood on his hands. She'd be married to him and have his kid. That would not be a good situation for her. It's better for her that she marries a farmer boy whose biggest crime was throwing some rocks when he was four. Okay? Y'all, y'all need to stop whining about that. You, you really do. So anyway. So then she gets to do that. She gets to protect her friends. She, she, she gets to do something really consequential for her friends. She gets to build a family. She gets to end on top of all this if the gods hasn't, hasn't blessed her enough, she has a daughter. And I already explained this in my last video, my most popular video uh, about Historia, but she has a daughter. And this is perfect because this entire time, Frida was trying to teach her how to be a lady, right? Her, her, she, she had an expectation of what a lady was, and she wore her mouth what a lady was. But now she has her own chance living through life. Life's ups, life's downs. Living through life, living through all of this, having all this experience, and being able to tell her daughter what a lady actually is. You see, with all of its many nuances. And so that is why, my opinion, not not my opinion. This this is this is fact. Okay, my not, my opinion was two videos ago. This is fact. Her character was not only consistent. But was good. It was a good character. She was a good character from start to finish. Her character arc ended beautifully. Again, yeah, I agree. Could have been executed better. 100%. But the actual character ended really well. The character stayed consistent. And she was a really, really good character. And she had applicable life lessons to us all. And that is the point of reading fiction. The point of reading fiction is not to entertain yourself. If you, want, if you, read, if you read fiction to entertain yourself primarily, then... Um, unsubscribe from my channel, never watch any of my videos ever again, and, and do yourself a favor and don't watch Attack on Titan ever again. And if you watch Attack on Titan, don't make stupid comments on any social media platform or anywhere else in the world ever, because you you obviously don't get it. Now, is Attack on Titan entertaining? Of course it's entertaining. How, how can it be entertaining? We have the music, we have the animation, we have the cool fighting scenes, we have the lore, we have all this stuff. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's not primarily supposed to be entertaining and on another note on another note you uh, don't appreciate certain parts mainly season three part one the uprising arc which i'll actually be shooting a video on um maybe tomorrow maybe today uh maybe sometime else but i will be shooting a video um, on season three part one otherwise known as the uprising arc all right so that's been the channel uh thank you if you have any counter arguments if you have any discussions you can uh, leave them Leave them in the comments if you want to get on a um, call with me, or if you want to have a, a video where you, you you chew me out for my bad opinions. Yeah, uh, you can you can ask me, and I'll try I'll try to set that up. Um, uh, Thursdays and Fridays will be the best day for that. Uh, but yes, anyway. So thank you for watching my channel. Thank you for, thank you for supporting, and have a good day.